This man is an environmental superhero. He's helped save a village in Malaysia from floods, waded through poisoned waters in the BC interior, and braved the financial wilderness of Bay Street. Hi, I'm Ed Quilty, President and CEO of Aquatic Informatics. How did this mild-mannered entrepreneur flex his clean tech data analytics superpowers in 60 countries around the world? How do you expand into global markets? I'm Michael Hainsworth, discovering the secrets to success in the innovation economy. 80% of the pollution coming out of industry and sewage from human waste goes back to the environment untreated. I thought this was a mission that I had to do. Historically, if you wanted to see what's happening with water, you take a sample in a bottle and send to a lab. You maybe come back a week later, a month later. These sensors came out in the early 90s where you could basically take that sensitive equipment they have in labs and put it actually in the river uh, or in the lake or in the groundwater. And they measure continuously. It's like the difference in looking at a photo versus watching the whole movie. I was like, this is gonna change everything. And so a superhero CEO was born. Intent on saving lives by analyzing that tsunami of data to ensure the world has clean water and by redirecting rising rivers before flooding can occur. But the ability to leap tall startup hurdles in a single bound was not something Quilty learned overnight. Yeah, it's, uh, it was not an easy journey. First, I thought I didn't really have the right skill set. I didn't know about financials and HR policy. So I went back and started learning business, basically. I went to MIT and took an entrepreneurial master's program. I took a boot camp for business. Do you miss not wading out there into the waters anymore? No, I don't miss it at all. I didn't feel I was making a you know, big enough impact and I wanted to work on much larger problems. Would you advise a, an entrepreneur to go global as quickly as possible? Probably not. For Quilty's aquatic informatics to work on much larger problems, his first step was to expand into his nearest neighbor, the United States. We really wanted to move globally because water is a global problem. Getting out of Canada, uh, I think for many companies, can be very hard. We actually uh, started out mostly in the U.S. That's where we had the early success and the biggest success. And it was that first win that helped Quilty overcome that biggest pain point in going global, building your reputation. A reputation is really important. The cleantech market's a really challenging market to get into. At the core of it, it's very conservative. And they can't really afford to take big bets. We gotta start really selling to people that trusted me. Quilty first leveraged the contract and the cachet of working with the biggest player in the world into contracts within the company's comfort zone. So our approach is really start with Commonwealth countries. So we sold into Australia, New Zealand, England, of course, the US uh, as well. But after helping save the Western world's water, Quilty turned his steely gaze further afield. Thailand, Indonesia, Brazil, Argentina. So I had a certain amount of comfort in interacting with those countries and cultures. Rather than building up a relationship which can take years or decades like we've done in North America, we've leveraged partners in Malaysia, we're in Sri Lanka, we're in Afghanistan, we're in Colombia. These areas, we've really had to find partners that work with our, our end market there. And for Quilty, when it came time to acquire those partners, growth through acquisition required a different kind of partner, one that understood the innovation economy. Unlike a lot of other banks we had uh, worked with directly in Canada, uh, CIBC was quite open to work with entrepreneurs. CIBC had this innovative DNA in them. They provided a flexible financing platform that uh, really helped us with our strategy, which was to use debt financing, which is non-dilutive and it can be a much lower cost of money for acquiring companies. And we've acquired three companies in the last two years. Did you bring your hip waders? Did not bring them today. In fact, I donated them to the University of British Columbia. I'm confident I won't need them again. <laughs>